back to that four step plus one method. Um, with this, it's not in the vertex form, right? This is actually in everybody on the block is a paper, a clamshell. So I'm going to go boom to boom, that's x squared. Boom to boom, that's plus x. Boom to boom, that's 2x. Boom to boom, that's plus 2, right? Now all of this gets multiplied by a negative. So later on, we're going to multiply that by a negative because it says negative times this, right? So we'll worry about that later, okay? Right now, we're going to add these up. So this gets x squared. This becomes uh, plus 3x. This becomes plus 2. Simple pimple, okay? Then we're going to change all their signs, right? So y is now equal to negative x squared minus 3x uh, plus, oh no, minus 2. Um, however, oh, I just thought of something. Because this was already factored, silly me, uh, I could have solved it, right? I could have said, because the whole point was to kind of find the zeros, right? Where does this equal zeros? These are two really easy points. Now, they are not the axis of symmetry points. This is like if we found the quadratic formula. That's the plus 5, the, the plus step, right? If I did the quadratic formula, I could get two points that are on the x. And so if it goes this way, it'll look like that. But if it goes this way, it'll look like that, right? So it doesn't give you the axis of symmetry. So you still have to do this. But instead of plugging in zeros, but it's like, I don't know, it's, I don't know, whatever, 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 whatever. What, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll explain myself more. Let's, 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 I'm already ahead of myself, I don't know what I'm doing, and I don't even know if I hit record. I did, okay, good. All right, so first step first is that uh, we want to do the, uh, find the derivative f prime of x equals 0, or that 2ax um, plus b equals 0, right? So 2 times 1, that's negative 2x minus 3 equals 0, right? So then negative 2x equals 3, right? And then divide by negative 2, and I get x is equal to 3 over 2 negative. Axis symmetry is not pretty, but it's, it's like negative one and a half. All right, to find the vertex, I have to plug it in. So I have to find the f of the uh, negative three over two, which is equal to, now I can plug it into this one or I can plug it into this one. I like this one, so I'm just gonna do that. Negative x squared minus three x minus two. Remember, that's part two, which is just plug it in. So f of the axis is equal to the vertex. Okay? Um, so I'm just plugging in negative three over two, negative three over two. Now this squares is uh, nine over four. Now that negative comes down and it's negative. But this negative negative makes a positive. And that's nine over two. Right? And what you'll notice here is this is really 18 over 4, right? Is it the same? Right? Because I multiply this by 2 and this by 2. Okay? So this is minus 9 over 4, 18 over 4. Guess what? They're halves. So that's good. We're on the right track. Minus 2. So what is, how many times is 9? Oh, that's 9 over 4. Minus 2. What is 9 over 4? We talked about that, didn't we? No. But it's two and a half. Oh, two and a fourth? So I got two and one fourth minus two. What's two and a fourth minus two? It's a fourth, right? So when we're talking about f of negative three halves, we're equaling to this. So the vertex in this case is one, negative one and a half and one quarter. Okay, so that's your vertex. Then you might ask, well, I need to graph it, okay? So I have this great graph that I want to be able to do, right? 
And so I'm going to erase this real quick. I'm going to put my graph here. Okay. Now, this is a kind of a nasty graph, right? Because we're going negative one and a quarter. Okay. So about here ish. Right? And then down a quarter. So if this is one, then I'm going down a quarter. So right there. Now this is a negative, so it should be frowning. Right? Okay. Now uh, we gotta find a couple of points. There's two ways to do this. One is the easy way. But there's actually an easier way because it's already factored. I know uh, oh that's not good. Why did I put it down here? That's a silly man. This is negative one and a half. Uh, negative one and a half, which would be right there, and up a quarter. Up a quarter. And the reason I was like, uh oh, that's weird, because it should be frowning, right? Should be frowning. But I know it has two x solutions. One of them is going to be negative 2. The other one is going to be negative 1. This is going down just like this. I already know it. How do I know that? How am I that smart? And remember, if we find, we can factor the, the if we factor it and set it equal to 0, right? Because 0 is where, if y is 0, then that's going to be your x-axis, or x answers for zero, right? And then you just set this, what, what's going to make this zero? Negative two, right? What's going to make this zero? Well, negative one. So I graphed it, I'm done. So it was that easy. But I could plug in the zeros, right? And if I plug in a zero, that's going to make this a negative two, right? So if I plug in a zero, this is going to go to one, two, right? And then on the other side, what's one and a half times two? Well, you got two one and a halfs, two dollar fifties. I got three bucks, right? So one, two, three. So over here, I'll have this one. So see how how this this graph is still matching, right? So we actually have five points. We have these two points. We have this vertic vertice. Then we have these points. And that's the plus 5 method. Remember, the 3 and 4 was the f of 0 and the f of 2 times the axis. And then 5 is either quadratic formula or factor it. Look, it's factored and solve for 0. Right? So if they give you this already factored out, it's pretty easy to graph. Once you find the axis of symmetry and the vertex. So no matter what, you still have to do this stuff. Okay? But, think of this. If you know these are the two points and they're giving you A, B, C, and D, and this is A, boom, boom, right? And this is B, right? And this is C, right? And this is D, right? Then you could go, oh, I know it has to be A. Because I already know those points are going to be A. And that's how you move through a test quickly. You don't have to do all this stuff. Right? You know, you can actually think what's going on. What's happening with these answers. Right? And if you have one where it's slow and then one... Let's say they're trying to be tricky, and they're doing it like this, but they're going through those right points, right? Then you just plug it in, and, okay, the vertex is right, but is it really going to be that high? Then you, you would have to do this portion, where you plug this in and find this, find the vertex, okay? But it's really easy to find the two x's. And then you know it's, it's frowning, so it has to go up over it. If there's two x's, Right? Then it has to go up over it if it's frowning. If this is positive, then you know it's smiling, it's going to look like that. Through those same two points. So if this were positive, right? 
it'd be going through those same two points. But like that. See what I'm saying? It's just the other way. Alright. I digress. Questions? Easy?